Good morning, good evening, hello to you wherever you are out there in the world. This is Adobe Live and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Renee Cherry, and I'm the marketing manager for drawing and painting at Adobe. And I'm gonna set up this special Adobe Live session. So we are doing something a little bit different today. This is a special session for South by Southwest. That's this awesome conference that happens in Austin every year. And this year it's virtual. And we thought that was a perfect celebration for Adobe Live. Now, if you're visiting from South by Southwest, you might not know about Adobe Live. So let me tell you a little bit about what it is. This is a running show that we do here at Adobe every week with all sorts of awesome content and awesome creators that'll teach you how to use all of the apps that Adobe offers. Today, we're focusing on my favorite thing, which is drawing and painting. And I've got my good friend here, Spencer, and he's going to show you how to draw, even if you think you can't. So Spencer, can you introduce yourself to the lovely people out there? Hello, everyone. Thanks of all. Well, not thanks of all. First of all, thank you, Renee, for the warm welcome. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. A little bit about myself. I'm coming to you live from Salt Lake City. Yes, Salt Lake City, Utah. and. I'm an industrial designer. So what that means is I'm a product designer. I design pretty much anything that people use. I've done toys, consumer electronics, I've done interior spaces, even dabbled a little bit with architecture. And my creative process always starts with a bit of thinking, of course, and visualizing those ideas. I actually started my career, well, not my career, but my studies in mathematics and hard sciences, physics, computer science, stuff like that. I love that. Yeah. And the reason that the reason I uh, wanted to talk about drawing anything is for me, it's been a journey. It's been a process learning how to draw in the in a way that makes sense for me. Mm. So I have a good balance of left and right brain thinking and abilities and just being able to break things down is kind of core to my process. So had a friend introduce me to design. And ever since then, I've I've been doing it. So that's a little bit about myself. Oh, and I also run a, a YouTube channel called Sketch a Day. I love sketching. You can find me all over the place. <laughs> and I wonder if that like melding of the two different minds is why you're so good at teaching, because that's why I wanted you for this. Because let me tell you, friends out there, Spencer's tips work for everyone and they're so easy. And you're going to be drawing like amazing after you learn what he's got to share today. Tips like when in doubt, rough it out and light till you get it right. We'll talk yeah. about those. But uh, in, in teaching myself how to draw and design and be a better creative, I've had to break down a lot of things. And I guess that's that's helped give me tools to teach and explain things to people as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. It is your superpower for sure. Uh, I have a few, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's awesome. So do you want to show us some of your work uh, that you've done just sort of get people like, yeah, absolutely. I think, I think I'll I'm start... not, sh I'm oh, not sure ahead. that everybody knows what an industrial designer is. I know I didn't when I was starting out. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that. All right. So um, as I mentioned a little bit, industrial designer is a, a product designer. So stuff mm -hmm. that people use things like backpacks, shoes, cameras, uh, computers, computer mice, anything that, you know, people interact with, we kind of dabble in. I like to think of us as the OG UX designers. That's kind of what we are back in the day when everything was so hands-on and tactile. That's what we did. Yeah. So I'll show you a couple pieces here on my iPad, um, stuff that I've worked on. Oh, all right, my bad. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and encourage you, if this is your first time at Adobe Live, please log into Behance and you can join us in the chat. And you can put any questions you might have for Spencer in the chat. In fact, Spencer is going to be drawing something based on your feedback. So what kind of thing from an industrial designer would you like to see? A backpack, a coffee mug, a whatever, like start imagining that up. So yeah, any, any, anything really. 
Yeah. I'll take on your challenge. So these are just a couple uh, examples of sketches that I've done. Um, they're most, mostly conceptual. Um, some of these are, are for real projects, but here's an example of, of the type of thing I've done on my uh, YouTube streams that I've That's done. Sweet. Some concept art type stuff. We're actually going to do a little bit like this today. This is a hybrid uh, digital and paper sketch. Nice. It's a little concept illustration as well. So it's uh, kind of kind of blurring the lines between product and art and expression. Right. Yeah. So kind of a riff on the Air Jordan One, um, and I, I I've done these as prints for people on occasion. <laughs> That's so great. When Kobe passed, um, I wanted to do kind of a tribute piece for him. Yeah. So I used Adobe Fresco to create this in vector so that I could scale it up and do whatever I wanted wanted with it. So that's wonderful. Fun. Yeah. And I love robots. Um, <laughs> one thing you'll realize about me if you follow me online is I love robots. Um, I just I just love science fiction, uh, dreaming of things that don't exist. And I guess that falls in line with being a designer as well. Yeah. Quick painting of an mm -hmm. SR-71 in fresco as well. That's so cool. Love, I, I love traditional art as well. So um, one of the things with, with digital art is, and it's really cool to see how much it's evolved over time, but this is actually done in fresco as well uh, with the awesome brush engine that the app has. So just practicing some still life, you know, mm. to, to be able to draw from your imagination, you have to be able to draw from observation hmm. and there's a play on words there if you think about it <laughs> <laughs> a little concept shoe design that's great some product sketching so this is what i would consider to be more mainline industrial design style mm. sketch where you have a person interacting with a product um, shows the context and perhaps usage scale things like that right a little football helmet that's cool more still life nice and i i i want to have a cabin one day <laughs> but i'm i'm far from that goal so i i love dreaming and just kind of drawing and, and practicing um, in my spare time so there's one of I my con concept sketches this is so beautiful it reminds me of what is it the farnsworth house is that the one that is up on stilts like this i'm not sure know? okay maybe i don't I'm, know i'm i'm that designer artist who is terrible at art history so <laughs> and references uh my brain is my brain is a sponge when it comes to specifics but mm -hmm. it's beautiful thank you love sketching cars as well um i actually did an internship at general motors Ooh. when i was in college and i decided not to do cars for a few reasons but um, i still love sketching them I still yeah. enjoy sketching cars a little oh. bit of a little bit of a photo mash like Concept. a space, space marine? Yeah, something like that. Maybe a cyborg. Heck yeah. It's another car sketch. Cute. Again, love robots, concept art. Go through a little quicker here. Car. Oh, speed shape. Ooh, I'd wear those. Really 100%. cool shoe. <laughs> yeah, I know. I post. I posted this online, and someone said, "Yeah, in, in Brazil or Brazil or Argentina, everyone wears shoes like this." I was like, "Oh, interesting. I had no idea." Um, I had no so, idea either. So this is an example of uh, what I like to do, which is take input from the audience. Someone will say, "Hey, do a shoe, make it a platform, and let's do pink." And I go, "Okay, yeah. let's figure it out." Another backpack. Right. right. So product designers, you know, we kind of focus on the use of an object, but also being able to represent it conceptually so that people can uh, understand it before you go into manufacturing. Making a product's really intense. It's yeah, it's something that can take anywhere from as little as 12 months to as long as five years. OK, wow. if, you're in the, if you're in the medical industry or if you're doing an automobile, it can take a very long time. So <sighs> being able to sketch the concept, visualize it and get some consensus is really important when you're working as a product designer. Right. All right, so lots of stuff here, lots and lots of stuff. I also sketch on paper and I just wanna show you guys a couple of my sketchbooks. So I'm gonna to switch to the overhead here. That sounds great. I'm asking the chat, what should we sketch today? So if you're out there while Spencer is switching, what do you want to see us draw today? What sort of object or cool like thing can we sketch out that would be exciting for you? 
So one thing I'll talk about today, um, and I'll, I'll get back to this point a bit later in the presentation, is the importance of having a sketchbook. Super, super important. Okay. So these are just a couple of my personal sketchbooks, um, whether I'm traveling, I just like to sketch mm -hmm. random things, mm -hmm. right, or practice, all sorts of stuff, drawing people, for example, or it might be, you know, some sort of interior space Ooh. as well. Looks like this was Chelsea Market. I think that was New York. Mm. I believe um, lots, of, <laughs> lots of robots, things like that, but super important to have a sketchbook. Okay. A nice, I like to think of my sketchbook, like a safe space mm. where you're not really presenting to anyone. This is your opportunity to express yourself without stress or pressure or any kind of uh, anxiety. Okay. Cause you, you get that, don't you? When you're like opening a program and you're like, I have to make a picture. There's, there's like a there's like a anxiety. There's, I love a blank sheet of paper and a blank uh, canvas, but at the same time, it's it's super stressful because it's almost like it's calling out to you, fill me up, put something on me. All right, yeah. so here's here's some other concept sketches. Oh, he's well. great. Ro lots of robots. Uh, I love robots. Robots are always good. People. I like practicing people. I'm not great at drawing people, so I tend to practice uh, drawing when I'm out and about. There's a sad robot with an ice cream cone. Can it be all bad if he's got an ice cream cone? And another robot with a flower. <laughs> all right, but I did want to show you this sketchbook. So um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Inktober. Do you know about Inktober, yeah. Renee? Yeah, I so surely this, do. So this was a sketchbook from Inktober. Ooh. And I decided to just kind of do lots of observational drawings. So industrial designers, a lot of times, will sketch with pen and paper, which is what I'm going to do today, mm -hmm. as well as digital. Uh, for a few reasons, but I wanted to challenge myself and push myself to see, okay, what could I do with, with pen with ink, pen and ink this Inktober? So, wow. It's hard because there's no mistake. Like if you make a mistake, you have to work with it. Yeah, exactly. You got to learn to work with your mistake. I always say, if you're learning to draw, use a pen that never forgets and doesn't forgive. Um, and that's going to push you to, to think and be a bit more considerate about what you're doing. Yeah. So, so yeah, just a little bit of my work there. All right. It's so we're really gonna, wonderful. We're, we're going to stick to the overhead and we're going to do something a little bit weird. Well, okay. I'm into think, it. Let's do I think, it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think for people that aren't used to drawing, it may seem a little bit weird. So mm. what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick stretch before we draw. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stretch with you. All right. So I'm going to stretch my action, my arm. So maybe, maybe we can switch to the, the main view so you can kind of see what I'm going to do. So when I'm drawing, I tend to draw with my shoulder. So what that means is I'm using my shoulder here yeah. as a pivot. Okay. And my elbow as a pivot, but I want to lock my wrist. Okay. So the reason for that is it'll help you get a higher fidelity in your sketches and mm. It'll, it kind of helps you get more confident lines as well. All right. So my stretch that I like to do is I just take my elbow and I just pull a little bit. And you should be able to feel it in your shoulder. I right do. There. I feel just it. Pull a little bit. And then you can go overhead too. It's a little bit awkward. Kind of pull. All right. So that's, that's what I like to do. Just kind of get a little bit loose. All right. Especially if you're just starting to draw, it's important to just be really loose. You wouldn't want to go run a marathon or a race without some sort of warm up or uh, preparation, right? No. So it's the same thing with drawing. You may not think of it as an intensely physical activity, but we're going to warm up now. So we'll switch back to the overhead and I'll show you a couple warm up exercises. So, in terms of what you can draw with, we have a ton of options here, at least I do on my desk. I've got uh, I've got uh, two pens, well, three pens. Where'd my ballpoint pen go? There we go. All right, so we've got a few pens here. Uh, this is just a Micron pen. My favorite pen to use is this Flare pen. They're really cheap. So if you don't want to spend a ton of money, you can get something like that. Nice. Um, I do, I'll send you a link, Renee. Um, yeah. With, I have a, a page on my website that has all the tools I typically use. So oh, cool. um, if you if you all need a reference uh, or you could use a ballpoint pen and I'll mm -hmm. show you kind of what happens when you use each of these or a pencil. I don't use a pencil very often. 
So I'm going to stick to my pen that doesn't forgive and doesn't forgive the Ooh. paper made flare. We're going straight into it. We're going, we're, we're, we're going right hard. In. We're going into the deep end. <laughs> okay. All right. Are you guys ready? <laughs> ready to go? All right, let's do this. Yeah. So what I, okay, I'm going to try and point out a few things that I'll do here that I think at this point come instinctually to me. Mm. So one is orient your paper in a position that's comfortable for you. Mm. Okay. And the reason for that is you don't want to have to contort your body to match where the paper is. Right. right. The other thing that you want to do is as much as possible, be over your paper. Okay. And what I mean by that is if your paper or pad is at a weird or funky angle, you're not going to be able to see properly. Okay. And drawing is really a process of uh, imagining something in your head, putting a line down, and then evaluating that line. Well, if you're looking at your paper from a really low angle or an awkward spot, pardon me, you're not going to be able to correctly evaluate the drawing and it'll just be a, a horrible mess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's the first thing. Find the, find a good angle to draw at and also make sure that you're oriented uh, reasonably well to your paper. Okay. And before we get into it, of course, relax, find some paper that's uh, affordable, cheap, something like uh, I'm just using printer paper today. Of course, recycle if you have the opportunity to do so mm -hmm. and be responsible. All right. So our first warm up exercise, I'm going to show you three here is I'm going to put a Sometimes these pens get a little bit dry, so I'll switch to this one. Just put a point on paper there on the left side and one on the right side. So I'm using a letter sized piece of paper and I've chosen to use the longest side because I want to push myself. If, if it's a bit hard for you, you can use the shorter side of the paper as well, but just put some dots on the paper. Okay. All right. I'll do three here. I don't usually use the dots anymore just because I'm used to drawing now. <clears throat> so what I want to do is again, lock your wrist. So here's my wrist. I'm locking my wrist. Right. I'm not, I'm not drawing like this where I'm all wiggly and squiggly. Okay. Right. Sometimes you want to do that, but right now we're not going to do that. Okay. So lock my wrist and much like life, what we want to do is focus on the goal. Okay. Where we want to go. <laughs> it's not about where you started, but it's where you want to go. Okay. It's a yep. little, bit, little bit like life. Okay. I love that. So there's a little bit of the setup. The next thing I want you to pay attention to is how I'm holding my pen. Ooh. So I'm not, I'm not holding my pen like I would if I'm writing. If I'm writing, I tend to hold my pen something like this. Right. right? And Maybe. you immediately scared me when I when you pointed that out, how far back you're holding it. Like I'm starting to oh, get really? nervous. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh no, Spence, you gotta be right up on the edge. What are you doing? Oh no, I'll show you, I'll show you why in just a okay. second. Okay. All right. So <laughs> let's let's draw a line and then I'll explain why I hold the pen this way. So yes, I'm going to start from left here and there's so, there's so much to this process it might seem overwhelming, but all of these things are going to help you. Mm. Okay. So hover over the paper and your point and just drag your arm to the right without drawing. Okay. okay. Without kinda, drawing. Without drawing. This is called ghosting your line, not to be confused with ghosting someone when you meet them online. <laughs> Don't right. do that. Don't, <laughs> Don't ghost do that. people online. Don't be a ghoster. Don't be a ghoster. <laughs> uh, but we are going to ghost our lines just like that. Okay. And it's a way of kind of practicing and telling your muscles, here's what I'm going to do. And then when you're ready, we can draw that line on paper. Now my line's not perfect. And this is the point of warming up. Just do this a couple of times. And you want to be able to start and stop at a reasonable point. So. Right. And also, you're training your muscle is what you're doing. You're like really just feeling you're warming up your arm. You're just warming up your arm and training yeah. your muscle to draw those straight lines. So this is why I don't use the points anymore. I just like to kind of go freestyle. Yeah. But and you're, I feel like you're almost better freestyle actually when I, I'm looking I at think it. I, I think I wow. am too. Cause I kind of imagine the points are there and I just start wow. and stop. Okay. So that's the first exercise. Now, when I was learning to draw, I would do pages and pages of these. I would sit really? and just watch TV and draw straight lines. So being an ecologically responsible designer, I'm just gonna flip my paper over and, and do my other warm up exercise. So the next exercise, oh, before I forget, before I forget, here's why I like to hold my pen about halfway up, okay? Right. So if I'm looking at the paper, for at least from my angle, it's gonna be kind of hard for me to show you, all right? But if my hand is all the way here, look at how much 
of the drawing or the paper my hand is blocking. Oh, okay? yeah. As opposed to holding it for a bit further back. I'm able to kind of see what I'm doing, right? So yeah. it actually makes drawing easier if you can see what you're doing as opposed to, um, you know, kind of guessing or yeah. hoping that you're in the right spot. So just, just uh, you know, back up off the tip a little bit and then... I'll try. You'll be able to see a bit. <laughs> you'll be able to see a bit more of your drawing. <laughs> this one's also really hard to explain uh, at a distance. But the other thing I try to do is uh, just hold your pen very lightly. Okay, mm. it's not. It's. Not, I'm not holding on to it for dear life, and there's not a lot of because in some ways the the emotional state or not emotional state, but your stress or relaxation kind of translates into the yes. drawing. All right. Yes, it I does. just saw. I just saw Jay. Uh, yeah, Jay checked into the chat. Hey, Jay. Long time. Oh, what up? Yeah, what up? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, so, so awesome. You know, and you got me there because I will be gripping my iPad with like this death grip, and I will oh, really? only notice. Yes, I'll only notice afterwards, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> exactly. Um, but Jay makes a good point. It can help to concentrate on endpoint, and that is that's the point of focus on where you're going, not where you start, right. or right. In, on the in between. Just shoot for the goal. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is some circles, and not every uh, not every designer or artist warms up, but I find that it helps me in the process. So I'm going to just hover again and do some circles. Right. Yeah. And I try Ooh. to shoot for about two or three inches in diameter. Okay. It's just what I like to do. Man, like you're that. really good at drawing circles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been doing it for a long time, so. <laughs> Those are nice. And again, we're training our arms here. We're feeling the muscles and we're warming them up. And that's what's important. Exactly. Uh, when I was in school, my professor would say, you, you should try and do this as long as you can until you feel your muscles actually getting warm. And I remember... I took a course uh, with another instructor called Sketch Aerobics, and quite literally, we would listen to EDM music and we would just jam and sketch, and it was so intense. But it was it was fun. We'd do a lot of these exercises. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is actually an ellipse. <clears throat> All right, mm. so I'm not gonna explain the mechanics of an ellipse right now, but if you're sketching a product, just understand that drawing an ellipse and being able to do so is really important. Okay. So I'm gonna start by drawing ellipses like so. And I'm not so much focusing on the accuracy as I am kind of opening the ellipse. So notice that right. one's a little skinnier. It's a little bit bigger, bigger here. And I'll yeah. show you why this is important in just a sec. And a couple things that might help you along the way. Those are really, it's great. And it's, it's almost like you're turning a circle in perspective, right? Exactly. That's the idea. So if you have something near you that has a uh, circular lid or top, <clears throat> for example, I have this little coffee mug here. If I rotate this in really uh, relative to the camera, you'll notice that here it looks like a circle, nice white circle. And as I rotate, that circle now turns to an oval. Okay. That's called the degree of the ellipse. So the degree is essentially the angle uh, that the ellipse is relative to how you're looking at a thing. Again, I come from that math, computer science, physics background. So this was my way of understanding why do things look the way they do, you know? Yeah. All right. I'm going to try and be a little bit more gentle with my transition here for this last series. And we'll do, I'll show you a couple more ways to do this. If you're just joining us, this is Adobe Live, and we're doing this special session here with Spencer, and he is doing showing you how to draw like an industrial designer. And these are tips anybody can use, no matter what your skill level. Okay, so on this paper, I'm just going to draw a series of lines like this. Okay, and we get to make a decision. I can draw my ellipses in two ways. One, I can draw them such that they are split in half. Okay. Like so. And you're trying to get both sides on each side. I'm trying to get both sides on each side. So it's a little bit harder because I don't have the limits yeah. on the edge. The other way to do it is to draw them between the two lines or try and try right. and hit those lines. All right. So I'll just do a quick series here and show you why this is important. Oh. 
I think I can guess because I'm starting to imagine that if I did this at least once a day, I would get <laughs> so good at drawing like the same consistency. Right. Cause I know I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I can't imagine endpoints and, and then draw them like not right now. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's sketch a day, Renee. Yeah, I know. I need to sketch more every day with you. A sketch a day keeps the bad stuff away or something like that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Wow. All right. So here's why this is important. So let's say I wanted to, I had aspirations to be a car designer one day. Um, I could throw a couple lines in here, maybe right? a couple, couple in here, like so. Slightly curved, All right, maybe another curve down here. I'm gonna put a heavy line like so. And then I'm just gonna kind of scratch a, a nice heavy line down. I'll take these two ellipses, connect them. I'll take this one, connect it over like so. All right, and let's go ahead and throw in some curves. You just turned that into a car. <laughs> we just, we little did you know, as you were warming up, you have been practicing Wow. How to draw a car, right? Because there is a, a amount of wheel wells in between the wheel wells, right? That's a thing. Yeah, there's there's a certain number. I, I'm not going to get into the mechanics of all that, totally. but um, <laughs> it, if you are really interested, I do have videos on that, but uh, it's about it's about uh, three and a half wheels, depending on the, the length of the car, so, or the type of the car. But in any case, if you're, if you're hoping to learn how to draw a car one day, there you go. Right. And it's not perfect, but it's a reasonable, reasonable representation of uh, an automobile concept. All right. So yeah. for an industrial designer, this style of sketching is called rapid visualization. So I, I tend to emphasize speed over uh, precision and like right. being super tight and finished because ideas come really quickly. And so it's important to just really push through and sketch, <laughs> sketch those ideas as fast as you can. Right. So that is kind of the, the type of sketching that I do rapid visualization. All right. So now that we're warm, we're a little warmed up. I want to talk about a couple principles that are going to help you uh, represent and show your concepts. And I'll just give a quick overview of some perspective stuff. All right. So perspective is really about a couple of things. One is scale Two, uh, position. Three, I'll say, well, I'll say scale and taper. And then detail, all right? So there's three types of perspective I tend to focus on. Mm. You're gonna have one point, can't write today, two points and three point. All right, three points really the one I tend to focus on, but you may have seen one point perspective sketches, something like this, you can start with a shape like so. And mm -hmm. if I play with this idea of scale and I draw another square like so in, in front of it or around it. Yeah. Okay. All I have to do is connect the corners just like that. Wow. And I now have a one point perspective scene or thing. Yeah. Okay. Now you may be looking at this and thinking, wow, it's just two rectangles with, with lines connected in the corners. <laughs> well, if we add some more details, okay. And I'm gonna try and follow the general uh, flow of these lines. If you notice, these lines appear, if I were to extend them, they appear to converge at some point off in the distance. That's, oh, called a, right. that's called a vanishing point. So as I draw these other lines, I'm trying to imagine, oh, these lines also converge to some point. Mm. All right. So if I wanted to put something else in this room, right, I could draw down like so. Now I have a little dresser if if i want to put a rug on the floor okay yeah you can do something like that and maybe maybe it's just a giant window or something all right mm -hmm. pretty simple stuff so that's this is one point perspective all right so two point perspective without getting too complicated here is going to be something like this i like to let's say i'm going to draw this box okay in a different perspective we'll start with one edge like so and one line like so. And instead of drawing a parallel line, right now these are parallel. I'm just gonna imagine that this edge is a little bit shorter than my front edge here. Okay. 
Okay, so if I draw down like so, and then draw this bottom line so that they taper, almost yeah. as if they go to some point way off in the distance. Right. All right, that's the beginning of my two point perspective. Okay, notice again how I'm holding my pen pretty far off the tip. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> so these three lines all appear. If I were to take a giant piece of paper and extend these out, they should feel like they converge to one point. Okay. Wow. And so in this scene, essentially what's happening is there's two points off in the distance that these converge to. So a simple way to think about it. Okay. As I mentioned, scale and taper, anything that's closer to you is going to appear bigger. So if I were mm -hmm. to measure this front edge, like so with my handy dandy finger calipers and pen <laughs> and go here, you notice that this edge is not the same height, even if this is a box, okay? It's not the same height, at least right. on the paper. And that's right. giving you the impression of perspective. So somewhere you may have seen two point perspective is in your environment around you. If you see something on your desk that is rectangular square and you look at it, you'll notice that the, the receding edge or the edge that's further away from you is going to appear to be shorter. All yeah. right. So the other thing I've tweaked in this view is this idea of point of view. Okay. Mm. So we're kind of looking, here's my magic perspective eye. We're kind of looking down on top here. In right. my one in my one point scene, we were kind of looking inside. Okay. We were looking inside the room. So here's my giant window. <gasps> On the oh my wall. gosh, you're drawing the other the scene, the same scene. Yeah, I'm kind of drawing the same scene. Here's a rug wow. on the floor. I won't draw the dresser, but maybe there's something on the wall here. So you can kind of see, oh, this this is one point yeah. where we're looking inside, right? Parallel. Right. And two point, you're kind of looking down at this object. All right. So with three point perspective, I'll just start with a two point shape. All right. So I'm showing you the hard stuff and then I'm going to show you the really easy stuff. Okay, cool. This and is... then once you're done, I do have a question about like how you know which perspective style to use. Like, how do I know which I should be doing? That's you know? a great question. All right. Another thing you'll notice when I draw is sometimes I'll draw just two lines. Um, again, it's about moving quickly and just establishing, okay, here's the shape of a thing. All right? right. And anyone can do this. I like to think as well, if you can draw a box, if you can draw a box, you can draw anything. All right. And I, I stand by that. I'll, All right. I, I can show you, I can show you why that is a little bit later as well. That sounds good. So for three point perspective, we have, okay. The convergence. It sounds like some epic sci-fi thing, the convergence. It does. Oh yeah. From Thor. That's right. So <laughs> we have these lines converging on the left, the right. And so for three point, we're going to add a converging point below. Oh, All okay. Right. So what I like to do is just kind of mark on the bottom here. And I do this in my head now um, and then draw this line like so. I'm just going to make it a little bit heavier right there, a little bit heavier. Okay. And now we have a slight taper in all directions. All right. So that's three epic. point perspective. It's got like an <laughs> epic feel to it. Like it's rising. The convergence. Up. Yes. Yeah. So. The, the amount of taper you have in your lines is going to give your drawing a certain amount of dynamic. Dynamic mm -hmm. just means kind of like energy, feel, flow. You can kind of think of it that way. All right. But seriously, if you can draw a box, you can draw anything. All right. I'm going to start telling people that and, and crediting you because people always do the like, oh, I can't even draw a stick figure. Right. Like that's what you hear. And if you can draw a box, you can draw anything. If you can draw a box, you can draw anything. All right. So this is our perspective box. Let's do a 2D box. Okay. And I want to point out a couple of things. So let's say you sit down to draw. And you're like, okay, my my uh, boss or <laughs> my client needs me to draw this, this thing. Maybe it's a little camera concept or something. Uh, it could be even, I don't know if you guys remember these guys, this little Palm Pilots. I found mine. Wow. Still, work, still works, actually. Whoa. Um, but it might be one of these things, right? So I can look at this and think, okay, what is the overall shape of this thing? All right, it looks like a rectangle. So maybe yeah. I'll maybe I'll start with a rectangle. So let's pretend we're looking directly at it at, at this Palm Pilot in the front view. Okay. The side and the top. Okay. okay. So what I might do is just start with a rectangle like this. Okay. Couple things I want to point out. On my corners of a shape, 
as an industrial designer, as you're sketching, what I tend to do is overlap. Okay. Mm. It's, it's a lot easier to draw that. Okay. Than it is for me to start and stop at specific points. I can do it because I've practiced. Right. But the way the brain works is this is still representative of a corner in as much as my overlap here is representative of the shape. Okay. So if we analyze this a little bit, you'll notice there's a little bit of an offset. Okay. We've got mm -hmm. a perimeter here. I'm going to kind of simplify this a little bit for our demo. And we also have kind of a drop down on this bottom piece and a slight curve. Okay. This is back when industrial design was crazy, <laughs> but we have a little curve. Okay. So I'm going to just throw a curve on right, right there. And then mm -hmm. let's go ahead and offset. Okay. So we'll draw some sort of weird palm device. All right, so now I have my front view. So what happens when I rotate my, my design? So it, it takes a little bit of imagination and, and thinking, okay, what does this look like as it rotates through space? How's right. that gonna look? All right, an easy way to do this is we can just extend lines over like so. And then now I'll draw two vertical lines. Okay, oh. I know I said don't draw with your, your wrist, but I have enough experience I can do it. <laughs> So I cheated, but here's another way to do it. Let's extend this out so I can show you. Notice how I've rotated my paper. Yeah. Okay, again, that's about picking an angle. I know that for me, if, if my paper is right about this angle, I can draw a nice straight confident lines, okay? So let's say this is my outline. I'm just gonna check from this view, all right? And we'll make that bottom piece a little bit oh, skinny. Yeah. Actually, since we're rotating this way, come up like so all right so we're gonna have a nice little skinny piece there and we're not gonna see our screen there'll be a mm -hmm. little part line just ignore this guy for, for now and then let's just do a quick top view okay. all right so we'll have something like this and if we look here maybe you want to include a little hole or something for your stylus that i can no longer find because <laughs> it's been oh man this it has to be 20 20 something years i actually might have the stylus for that and I'm oh, not okay. joking. I'll send it to you. <laughs> All right. I don't, good. I don't have the Palm Pilot, but I have the stylus. <laughs> okay. So there we have a top view. We have a front and a side. All right. So if you're, if you're showing a concept, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay. Mm. You've got, there's information here. I know what the thing looks like from the front. I know what it looks like from the side. And I know what it looks like from the top. So what happens when you want to draw this in perspective? Well, we kind of went over just really quickly um, some perspective pointers, scale, position, relative position. Are we looking at this from the top? Are we looking okay. at it, uh, you know, from the underneath? Right. Okay. What's what's our point of view? Just a quick aside on point of view. So how you draw something can often indicate scale. You had asked earlier, how do you know what perspective to use? How do you know if it's one or two or three point? Well. Drawing, sketching, design is really just all about uh, communication. Okay, mm -hmm. so first ask yourself, what are you trying to communicate? <laughs> okay, am I drawing a room? If I was drawing a room, I might do something like we had before, okay? Or shape like this and use this as a template to start putting things in, okay? Right. If I'm drawing something like a toaster, okay, I may do something like so. All right. Change my point of view. This is because relative to a toaster, if someone were uh, standing, there's a little little person here. If <laughs> someone were standing and looking at, let's see, little arm there and head. Right. You're going to be looking down at this. this is a very big toaster, but you're looking <laughs> you're looking down at it because it's smaller than you. Right. right As right. opposed to if I drew a toaster like this. <laughs> the epic toaster. You might think it's the brave little toaster flying. Right? Yeah, yeah. You guys remember that, I right? Do. So if I if I drew a toaster like this, it kind of uh, creates a perception of scale. That oh wow, here's our, our little person, kind of pointing up at the toaster. So how you draw something can immediately communicate scale. Uh, another way to to draw in three point might be like this, and you may have seen this if you've uh, gone outside and looked at a tall office building. Right? Mm -hmm. You may have seen something like this. So here I've stacked two boxes on top of each other and we have a vanishing point above, right. one to the left and one to the right. So if I were drawing something like this palm device, I would likely pick a perspective 
where it looks as though or seems as though the person's looking down at the thing. Right, yeah. like it's in their hand or something so that they can exactly. imagine it. So immediately that's going to communicate, hey, this is actually smaller. And you may not have to draw a hand um, to explain what the concept is. So I'm going to start by drawing an edge like so. All right. And let's do an edge here. Now, when I draw this other line, I just want to make sure that these are not parallel. Okay, parallel is easy, but it's not entirely accurate. And if you're drawing a concept and you want to inspire confidence in your viewer, just like communicating verbally, having the right sentence structure or uh, visual language, if you will, is important. So this right. is why perspective is important and why I stress it a lot as I teach and I explain things. Okay, so here's one line. If you just take your pen and move over, that's parallel. But right. I want you to, you can kind of put your finger here and just tip the edge out a little okay. bit. And that's going to give you a sense of, okay, I need to, to converge or have a convergence on the left side as well. All right. I've done this enough that I don't need to do that, but there we have these two lines that appear to converge like so. Yeah. And I'll just extend these so you can kind of see there's a slight taper there. Yeah. All right. And then away from these corners now, I'm going to draw down, down, down like so, so that these lines look like they're converging at a point as well. Mm. Now I can connect like so and overlap and lightly overlap like so. Well, what about our curve? How do we do this? Like I said, if you can draw a box, or you whether it's a, a rectangular box, you could draw anything. So now I'm just going to look at my sketch and go, oh, it looks like we had a little curve here. So mm -hmm. in perspective, I'm going to draw another point and I can curve to that point. Okay. Ah. Yeah. And I know that I'm dropping down on the side a little bit, so I can drop down right there. And if you want, this is called drawing through. Okay. So if you're, if you're nervous and you, you want to be a little bit lighter with your stroke, you could use something like a ballpoint pen, for example, and just lightly draw through. It might be a little hard to see on camera, but you can draw really lightly. A ballpoint pen is cool because you can push really hard and get a dark line, or you can go really light with it. Okay. Wow. So I can go really light there and figure out, okay, if I were to cut through this product, what would it look like? Well, really what I'm trying to do is just drop down a little bit and give myself a little bit of an edge there like so and raise up like so and now i have an outline cool well nice. again the hum humans are funny i mean <laughs> in the sense that if i just put a heavier line here all of a sudden it our brains start to focus on the outline right and not, and not all the these are called construction lines mm. that are on the drawing so now i can make this line a little heavier right there like so and we'll throw in our part line on the side i think there's a little volume wheel or some little doodad on the side there and now i'm going to sketch in the screen portion so imagine okay if there's a series of lines here if i were to draw all over this surface like so okay all these lines are kind of flowing in perspective all right, so I can take these two lines now, just connect here, make that a little heavier right there, over like so, and like that. Now I'm just going to add a double line just mm. for where the screen kind of recesses a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit, all right? Something like that. All right. Now, I also have handy dandy markers that I use quite a bit as well, okay? So the reason I use markers, they can communicate color, uh, light, shadow, and so forth, all right? I'm not gonna yeah. get too far in the weeds there, but I want you, if you're drawing along or trying to draw something like this, think about the top of your product as being the lightest portion. So everything away from the light, I can add a little bit of shadow on. So I'm just gonna take this design marker now and hit these edges like so. And there I've added some depth. So the perspective, the value on top helps this feel more depthy. All right. Very, yeah. very simple example of a sketch here, but one way to do it. So start with your three views mm -hmm. and then draw a box, cut that box into pieces. 
sounds sounds savage. <laughs> <laughs> divide that box into uh, the main portions, I guess you could say. And you could continue to divide this if you wanted to. So if there were some button, for example, here, right. there's that ellipse practice coming in handy. Ooh, yep. Right. Let's say we have some funky buttons here. We can throw that on like so. If we want to throw a shadow under this, I'm just going to imagine. Okay. okay. Just like this Palm Pilot is casting a shadow on my paper. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. Um, I'm going to throw a drop shadow in. So it's basically just taking the shape, okay, right. that rectangular shape, and I'm going to offset that and now shade this in with just some straight lines. And now I have a shadow. It's so easy how you did that. And it's just like, I don't know it. I'm okay. This looks really complicated, even though you made it easy. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to say all at once. And I got really like jumbled up as I was saying it, because uh, just really quickly, you took that really simple sketch. And I think what was amazing that I absorbed was you used that first sketch to make your other sketches. And I don't know that that's obvious to everybody as they're starting out to draw, that you can do that. You know, like that first one, you just drew lines across so that you knew your side and your top view yeah, exactly, were going right to be there. the same. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of those little tricks that people don't realize will make it look so professional. So Renee is talking about these. Oh, this marker is dry. I'll use my handy dandy red marker. Um, so she's talking about this bottom line and just extending that over. Right, because that makes that makes it so that they're the same height. It's really yeah. easy. Okay, same thing here. I I uh, virtually extended those, but um, if you extend that that width down, it makes it easy to pick up on those those proportions. Now, something I I neglected to mention is it can be difficult. Okay, it can be difficult to estimate or guesstimate, as I call it this proportion in perspective it does take right. some work take some effort i yeah. recommend checking out my website youtube i have explanations of all that but for a concept and just jump just getting into sketching okay close enough is good enough <laughs> all right don't don't tell your professor or boss i said that but <laughs> In this case, <laughs> close enough is good enough. And, right. and I do want to throw out there that Howard Pinsky is in the chat and he's saying it would have taken me 16 years to draw what you did in three minutes. But you know what, Howard, he shows you how to do it. I think you can do it in three minutes too. So just try and get it close enough. That's okay. I, I will say as well, trust your gut. If something yeah. look if something looks off, it's probably off. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds silly and maybe a bit obvious. If it looks off, it's off. But definitely check that out. All right. We, tr we train our eyes by looking at stuff all day. And okay. so that's that's how we know. So let's say, I mean, this this is a pretty straight lined object. What happens when you want to do something that's organic? OK, mm -hmm. I'll show you some quick ways you can do that. Let's say um, let's say I wanted to draw something that's bean shaped or just some random random shape to it. We're going back to the the 90s, the 80s, and we're, we're doing some crazy product design. All right. So I'm just <laughs> I'm just going to draw some shapes on paper. And I'll show you a really cool trick. All right, so here's one shape. There's another. And let's do something like this. All right. So right now, all we have on the paper are boundaries, right? Just mm -hmm. a line. You can mm -hmm. kind of think of a line as the limit of what you can see of an object. Okay, mm -hmm. the limit of what you can see because lines don't really exist. There's no infinitely thin, impossible thing yeah. that exists out there that we can see. So we have an outline, all right? And now I can do a cross section line. So we're gonna imbue ourselves with superpowers and imagine that we have laser eyes and our laser eyes are gonna cut through across the object, kind of like a loaf of bread, <laughs> all right? Oh. I love that. I love the idea of having laser eyes. <laughs> Yes. So now I'm going to draw a cross. And depending on how I draw this line, it's going to dictate what the shape is. Oh. So do you notice how this starts to feel like it has some shape to it? Right? Yeah. And I can draw another line across. This is called a cross section line. Ooh. All right. So it kind of looks like a maybe a lumpy blood cell or something like that. Right? <laughs> kind of weird. In fact, if we wanted to make this one kind of like oh, that. Yep. 
It is like a red blood cell or like yeah. a donut. Yeah, almost like you you took your finger and you're poking down. I'm terrible at drawing hands, but it's like you're poking <laughs> down down into this thing, right? You can do the same thing here as well across, right? If this is rounded this way, but then at this point, if it's indented. So you can pack a lot of information into a sketch or concept yeah. just by using this method. So this is the second thing I want to show you. The first is... If you want to start with a structured view and translate that, you can do that, right? The next is if you want to use contours, Robzilla says pro tip contours. If you want to use contours, you can do that. And then to reinforce what you did, if you want to get fancy, take a really light marker. This is just a warm gray art marker. And then we can add a little shadow on the side, for example, like so, maybe on the inside there. And now these shapes have what's called form. Okay, so yeah. they have they have some presence on the page. They're starting to feel like something. All right, so this is the second example. All right, so what's a real life uh, example of this? Um, let's say I want to do something like a backpack. Okay, mm. let's say we want to do something like a backpack. I, I could start with just a bean shape. All right, so I'm thinking, what's the overall shape of this thing? Okay, so there's my outline. So the first thing we did is we're we're going to define the form. Form refers to the three dimensionality of something. Okay. This is a shape, but we're going to push for form. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is divide that shape. So this really means, okay, what does the thing do? So what does it do? All right. So what I mean by that is, oh, hey, if this is a backpack, maybe it has a flap on mm -hmm. the top. So I can divide and add a little flap, maybe some straps here. This is a very simple backpack. Okay. We can divide perhaps this way and down like so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe add a little shape here. That's also a division. Kind of looks like a face actually. <laughs> and then <laughs> just a little line there for a zipper, for example. And I'm going to be lazy and use this line here. Actually, it's not lazy, but... It's, it's good design practice to have some continuity. So I'm going to take this line through like so mm. and taper that down. And this is going to become the strap of my oh, backpack. Nice. Just like that. All right. Notice how when you put two lines next to each other, it's starting to communicate some thickness. All right. Yeah. So it starts starting to feel like, and I can actually put a contour line here, right? If I just right. if I just wrap that, that just a little bit around, it starts to feel like a strap. So if you're really into drawing backpacks or designing backpacks, here's one way to do it. Okay, we'll draw another strap. This is a little bit further away than uh, the strap in the front, so we have a thinner uh, profile for that for the strap to the right. Yeah. Okay. On the underside, I'm going to add a line there, and what I'm doing is I'm imagining just using my my mental powers here. I'll actually show you with a marker so that this isn't as confusing. I love how you use the perspective, even in this backpack, like, you know, that's your whole point, but I'm seeing it. I'm connecting the dots of like, yeah, the back strap is a little bit thinner. And exactly. So there's an overall, if you notice an overall yeah. taper from left yeah. to right. Like I said, if you can draw a box, you can draw anything. I stand by that, right? Mm -hmm. so there's the front edge of our box. And now everything is kind of tapering away. Can you see the box now? I see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you can draw a box, you, you can draw, can draw anything. anything. All right. So this line, I'm going to use a different color so it's a little easier to see. So this line right here, if I were to continue this, okay, and it has thickness, I would have this line kind of exit right around oh, there. Oh, yeah. So again, I don't actually do this while I'm drawing in real life, but, you know, I don't draw like a red line or anything like that, but I kind of right. usually just estimate and guesstimate where that continuity would be. And that's important because it's going to give you a sense of thickness mm. right, on this strap. Okay. So I can just break this and I'll just put a little doodad in here for uh, some little hardware. And then we'll draw a couple other lines. It's a really long strap. A couple nice. lines like that. Uh, maybe this is a side pocket. Mm. So I'm going to break with that line, come down a little bit like so. All right, maybe we're a little scrunched under here. 
So now I'm doing what's called adding line weight. Okay, so making some lines heavier than the others. And kind of like we did in our initial sketch, that's gonna help us have some definition around the design and what's happening with our sketch as we beef up our outline. That's awesome. So line weight, that's the thickness. That's like yes. how strong. Yeah, so notice even in this area that looks a little bit fuzzy because the line's a little bit heavier, Yeah. your brain kind of focuses on that outline. So if you're someone whose sketch is a little messier or you know, you, you lack the confidence, you can sometimes, not always, but you can sometimes fall back on line weight to help mm. you clean things up a little bit, right? A little it's, bit... it's that communication that you were talking about because drawing is communication and the weight of the lines. It's kind of like how loud you're speaking almost. Yeah, absolutely. That's one way to think about it. You don't always have to use a marker either. You can get creative mm. with uh, how you texture things. So here's an example of using a pen just to say, you know, maybe this is some sort of strap material. Right. Right through there. All right. Daniela in the chat says that she wishes that you were her drawing professor at university. And I would like Aww. to second that because I, <laughs> this is a lot of learning. This Thank is amazing. You. So you can continue, you know, if this is a design you're working on, you could continue adding some details here and there, breaking things up. Uh, yeah. If you want to add stitches, just a couple, Ooh. a couple little hits here and there. Yeah. Almost looks like a baseball cap and eyes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we can break this up on the side. All right. You can get creative with your lines. You can do a lot of stuff with lines. Um, I do tend to think of myself as more of a line artist illustrator mm -hmm. than, uh, you know, traditional painter, okay. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I love lines. I try to stay away from them. I usually paint. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually harder for me to paint or illustrate without lines than it is with. So here's another example, you know, between these uh, lines that I drew, just added yeah. some hatching. So it's called hatching, Ooh. right? And hatching is really cool because if you're working really quickly and you don't have a full studio or a full setup or anything, but you want to show some differences in materials or what's happening in a sketch, you can just draw a series of straight lines. So here's, for example, a series of straight lines, right? And this creates the impression of a value or tone, right. right? If I draw another series of straight lines at a different angle, okay, I get a different value, but now I also have texture. Yeah. Right? And you can keep doing that. Now I'm doing some vertical lines, right? So notice it looks almost darker. Yeah. But there's also a texture to it. So that's one way to do it. Okay. I can go even closer with those lines together, like so. Here's our original kind of spacing, something like that. Right. And if I space these out even more, I have three <laughs> values. Yeah. So I have three values. That's just a really quick, again, think rapid visualization, quick sketching um, and showing concepts. So on this bag, for example, eh, you know, it, it, it shows a bag. It's fine. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Always try to work smarter <laughs> if you can. Okay. So work I'm smart and lazy. That's what I'm hearing. That's right. So I'm, I'm hiding, I'm hiding this strap right here behind okay. the bag. So I don't have to draw the rest of that strap. I only have oh. to focus on one strap. Easy. You know, if you want to make it harder for yourself, you can, you could draw the rest of it or have this strap off to the side, but I'm trying Why? to work as quickly as possible because you know, if you're a designer, if you're creative, um, time is money, <laughs> quite, mm -hmm. quite literally, mm -hmm. right? How much time we spend on something. So let's say this is a side mesh pocket. I'm going to use this texture right there, right? Okay. For our, our mesh pocket. So now I can just draw some lines like so. I might even curve them a little bit right. to, help, to help reinforce that this is a curved, curved pouch. Service. All right. So this is an instance where I'll use my wrist. Okay. I'm okay. using, I'm using my wrist to just slightly curve these lines. Okay. I see people asking if I have a class. I don't have a class yet, but I'm working on it. So just, uh, if you follow me online, I'll be making some announcements soon. Ooh, that's so exciting. Please let us know when you have a class like that. Cause we'd be really glad to promote you. I will. 
All right. What so now I'm I've seeing... curved the other direction. So now we have a mesh pocket. Look at that. Oh, it's and I'm seeing that work that you did in the warm-ups. Like your lines yes. have that, you know, like that beautiful distance and your endpoints are lovely. Like I see why you did that. Absolutely. It takes a little bit of practice and work, but you'll get there. And if you want to add other textures, right, we can do that. I'm drawing with my shoulder now. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. So maybe there's a texture on the bottom. And if we want to repeat that up here, we can do that too. Wow. And don't get too hung up on things like the overlap. Again, if you mm. need to, you can add another line like so. And now you have a more defined region. This is my kind of placeholder logo. I just like to do a little scribble. So there's a logo. <laughs> All right. So there's how we turned a bean shape into a bag. Okay. So bean shape into a bag right. using this principle of uh, cross contour and outline. All right. We talked about point of view as mm -hmm. well. A few perspective tips and kind of this three view construction. All right. So those are three ways to work. I'll show you one more way. Okay. To work. All right. Now you may have noticed in the intro, I did some more complex things, mm -hmm. uh, shoes, computer mice, cars, all those things that yes, you might want to sketch. Okay. Um, it can be challenging, can be intimidating, but one thing or two things I want you to think about for this next portion of our presentation, light until you get it right. And when in doubt, rough it out. Light uh, until you get it right. And yep, when in doubt, doubt, rough it out. Rough it out. Okay. All right. So for light till you get it right, I'm going to switch the paper I'm using, actually. Really? More, more of a matter of personal preference than anything. So I'm switching to some more expensive paper. It's called marker okay. paper okay. Um, because I like using pencil. But let's say we're designing something like a utility knife. And okay. you may not feel confident sketching in perspective. I have a special pencil here. It's just a black colored pencil by Prismacolor. Uh, Prismacolor Premier. So I'm going to sketch a simple utility knife. Let's do two. So I may start with a curve like that. Okay. Right. Let's do another curve like so. And I'm going to terminate the end of my knife like so. So nice and light. By light, I mean I am working oh. with a very light, very, very light touch. I right? get it. Light until you get it right. Yeah. There's two ways to go, but I'll show you both ways on the same paper. So now, and again, look at how I'm holding the pencil pretty Ooh. far up, pretty far <laughs> up. But now I can kind of use, and I'm ghosting my lines just like we did in our warm up, right? Ghost so your lines, just, not your friends. So I'm just going to strike an arc there, right? Okay. So I'm going to strike this arc and extend down. Now, maybe I want to make this a little bit longer. So I'll extend this out, right? Like so. This can naturally be some sort of parting line on our design. So I'm going to use this to now create some sort of loop. So this is a utility knife, something that you might use like a box cutter, I guess people mm -hmm. call them that. All right. So extend over down like so. All right. Maybe I don't want my, if I'm holding this, I don't want my, my hand to interface with, with the blade. Right. Right. Okay. So if there's going to be a blade in here, all right, might be tucked in maybe about this big in here. So I can just extend this out and draw the outline nice and light. Okay. I'm barely, uh, I guess you could say a, a term I like to use is I'm just kissing the paper with the pencil, all right? Just lightly touching the paper. Okay. And maybe our adjustment or uh, what do you call it? I don't know what you call it. Slider. Button. Is something. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Pretty simple, nice light sketch. Okay, cool. Now that I've worked this out lightly, made some changes here at the end. Um, maybe let's add another line right through there. Now I'm going to do something really fun, which is if you notice these pencils have a really long pencil lead to uh -huh. them. Okay. Just like that. So I'm going to take this pencil and this is actually a, a good segue and a lot like using something like the iPad where the Apple pencil, you're actually able to tilt and get a nice shade. Right. So now I can actually take this pencil. I've changed my grip yeah. slightly, and I'm just gonna shade here. Ooh. And you do okay. get that different texture. You get a little different, it's a, it's a little bit more expensive paper, but <laughs> you get a better, 
you get a better texture with that, right? So what I'm adding here is just what's called a core shadow. So this is mm. going to give you the impression that, hey, this thing has some body to it. If I were to cut through this knife, it might look something like this mm. as a shape, okay? Right. And so what I'm shading is essentially this core shadow right there. Right. All right. So work light until you get it right. Mm-hmm. Use your shading to add some value. And now I'm going to just push a little harder on the pencil. Notice that I'm rotating the paper again. Yeah, making it right for your arm, whatever your arm needs, yep. so you can get those if, confident lines. If you are going to use a pencil, you got to watch out for smudges. So there I have a smudge oh, already. Yep. Okay, you got to watch out for that. But I guess that's another benefit to holding a little bit higher up <laughs> on the pencil making me nervous <laughs> yeah it took me a few years to learn that one but uh it totally pays off yeah i'm pretty brutal about it so you can do a lot even if you don't feel comfortable sketching in perspective i wanted to show you this yeah all right so that yes you can and let's even change the shape here whoa the knife which we can we can do that because our brains focus on the darker uh, lines yeah exactly all right and so now i'm going to make this a little darker and now we can come in and even depending on how you push on that tip you can do some really interesting things with with just just the tip of a pencil yeah right? it's beautiful you position things so now we have a nice 3d look there yep all right and even on the blade itself okay you might want to show the sharpened, oh, yeah. the sharpened portion of the blade. So we could do something like that. Okay. All right. Again, without getting too much into the specifics of light and all that, but there's an example of working light to get it right. Well, what if I wanted to do this with pen? What's one way to do that? Okay. Oof. Well, I have here a warm gray marker. You can get these art markers really cheap online or at your art local art store. Um, I would recommend getting just a really light gray marker, like a, a cool gray one, two, three, or a warm gray one, two, three. But in any case, I can do kind of the same thing. So I can create a sketch, something like this. It's really light. And if I want to make changes, we can do that with the marker. So the nice thing with working with a marker is it kind of takes some of the pressure off of having to get it right the first time if you are working with a pen for example so it I'm feels okay with working with a pen I was saying like I, if you're working with a marker it spooks me more I guess <laughs> oh really than a pen yeah maybe I don't know maybe not more than a pen but there's you know I guess markers I have a hard time blending them and that makes me stressed out before I even start <laughs> Oh, I don't even worry about blending too much, <sighs> too much right now. Okay. So the nice thing about this is I've worked really lightly. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like, it's almost like taking another piece of paper and putting over right. okay, and creating an overlay, but I'm doing it all in one shot. So yeah. now I can take my pen and basically redraw, oh, but yeah. I know exactly where to go because we did, we did all that hard work with the marker. Totally. All right. And it's quite charming, actually, the marker plus the pen. It's got a nice look to it. It has a different look. I know you asked, hey, you know, how do you know what perspective to use? There's also yeah. a question of how do you know what material to use? Um, mm -hmm. It kind of depends on the project I'm working on. Sometimes if I'm doing something that is, you know, hard, I'll typically use a pen. Right. I feel it lends itself better to um, hard shapes. showing that concept. Yeah, it might be the phase of the project. Mm. Okay, so if I'm in the early stages, I may use kind of a, a looser technique like this, All right? And instead of shading with the pencil, I'm just going to add a couple lines there. Right. And then I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, but I wonder if you can talk a little bit about how this translates into digital, because I think people don't know that it's not any different. At least I think it's not any different. So it's not, it's not super different. Not at all. Um, there's two ways I like to do that. One is I'll take my actual sketch and bring it into a digital program. The other oh. 
is I can show you in a digital program how I might approach something like this. So we'll do a little bit of both. Okay, cool. Right. That was the wrong warm gray. That was warm gray three. Oh, so don't do want... that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So light, light to get it right also refers to your markers. You want to start with your lightest, your lightest markers first. Okay. All right. So let's switch to the iPad here. <gasps> Exciting. And here so I'll let you switch it up and I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing. So all right. again, drawing is fundamental. You should all draw. Drawing is just communication. And it's not actually any different from paper, from everything that Spencer showed you on paper. He is going to show you in Adobe Fresco. And Adobe Fresco is a app just for drawing and painting. Came out about two years ago. Um, and we're going to show it off on the iPad. And I think you're going to be pretty stunned at how much it's going to look just like what Spencer did on paper there. All right, give me just a sec. Yeah, take your time there. If you're just right. joining us, this is our special presentation for South by Southwest. Here at Adobe Live, we do these awesome presentations all week on all sorts of topics from UX design to illustration and photo editing and video. So you can learn from the pros how to use our tools. And today, again, we're talking about illustration, which is my favorite thing to do, is to draw and to paint. And we're getting right. Spencer set up with Adobe Fresco. Okay, so now I've switched over to the magical land of Fresco. Um, Fr Fresco is pretty awesome. If you haven't tried it out, it is absolutely free to, free to use. Um, and it comes chock full of amazing brushes. I actually went ahead and made my own brushes because I wanted to translate some of what I just did on paper into Fresco. But I will say the stock library is awesome. So I'm just going to create a tabloid sized document. You're presented with some options here as far as templates that you can use. So I'm just going to tap on tabloid. It's going to do its thing. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Sorry, we're switching. Forgot, forgot to switch over there. So I've now tapped on tabloid in the uh, opening window. I'll do that one more time so you can see. Thank so you. Tabloid right there. And I'm going to turn on one more thing. I usually turn this off. Uh, I usually turn this off when I'm working on my own, but I'm going to do you a favor and have show touches a little blue dot. So you'll Ooh. see, you'll see what I'm doing. Okay. Thank you. So I went ahead and actually just quickly scanned. You can also take a photo if you want of uh, what you're doing at your desk, and import it in. I tend to like a scan because I work at my desktop. And if you happen to be working on a Mac, you can copy and paste. Mm. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm trying to remember. Oh, tap on the layer, and then I'm going to hit paste from clipboard. It's going to copy from my computer and drop this scan in, and you'll see. That's this. magical. <laughs> yes, so there's Whoa. there's the scan. Yes, magically, magically translated over. Now I'm just going to rotate this. Fresco has snaps in for your transform as well. So we can mm. transform that in. And there's our sketch that we just worked on. Wow, it looks okay. great. So one thing you need to be aware of if you've worked with Photoshop, Fresco, that kind of thing, this is essentially kind of imported a little bit like a smart object. So I need to tap on the layer and hit convert to pixels if I want to manipulate that, okay? Mm. There's a little slider here and I'm not going to go over the whole interface. I highly recommend you check out my Adobe Max session on Fresco. It's really... Uh, paste in a way that will give you a very step-by-step -step introduction to the interface and all the mm -hmm. tools in Fresco. All right, so I'm going to tap on these sliders and under blend mode, I'm going to switch to multiply. And so now I have a new layer underneath my top layer. So if I come in here, okay, I'm going to go to my sketch -a day brushes. I even have a marker brush. All right, so I'm gonna use this marker brush uh, like so, and let's pick a nice red here, All right? Make this really big. And I'm gonna do what's called a paint and erase technique. So I'm just going to uh, paint over the whole thing with my marker, like so. And try and, oops. That Just texture look. looks so good. It looks like a marker. Yeah, that's the whole idea is to make it look like a real design marker. So now, you know, where I want to have a little bit more intense red, you can kind yeah. of shade here, maybe right next to this portion right there. And I'm going to 
kind of give this some body just like we would on paper. Nice. Yeah, so just like that. And now I'm going to erase what I don't need. Okay. So that's one way to do it. Paint and erase. Mm. So when I erase here, you'll see that now I have my tones. It looks so crisp on those edges. It's really nice. Yeah, so I'm using a hard eraser. You can also change the eraser brush you use by just tapping on that icon and you have some mm. options. I tend to use the hard round variable eraser. All right, mm. now if I wanna make this red more intense, you can always tap on the little circle that has your color and that's gonna give you options. All right, so if I need to make or have a little bit more contrast, for example, in certain spots like so, you can do that. That's cool. And let's say I want to make this, the end here, gray. Mm. Okay. Shade this in, just like that, and play with your values. Values are important. And values <laughs> just mean how light or dark something is. So if, right. if, that, if that word's a little confusing to you, just how light <laughs> or dark I'm making, making things, okay? The cool thing too is now that this is a pixel layer, if if I've decided, you know what, my sketch was really rough. I want to clean that up. You can always erase some of your sketch. Um, and like mm -hmm. I said, I've replicated some of my real brushes. So let's say I did make an oops and I erased that portion. I can actually tap here. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing with Creative Cloud is all your brushes sync. So I can actually nice. use these brushes in uh, on my desktop as well. But you'll notice that the look of this brush is approximately similar to using a felt pen on paper. So if I need to come in, erase something, right? This is like, ah, oh, this is a little too messy. Yeah. Let's go ahead and fix that. I can do that. Oh, that's nice. All right, so there's one example of mm -hmm. how I would work from digital analog. So scan something in, you can erase, clean up if you need and then use a brush to mimic the look and feel and then finish up. All right, so I'm just gonna touch up a little bit here with the marker. A question I get a lot um, with regards to drawing is, how do you know when enough's enough? How do you, know when, to, how do you know when to stop? <laughs> I don't know. To... If, I don't know if you ever know, you just give up. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, there's that. You, Cause you can, you can, I could jam on this for hours and have right? A pretty awesome drawing but again i try to prioritize okay what am i trying to communicate mm. okay in, in this case maybe it's the surface geometry if you mm -hmm. will of this section all right so just making sure that i have enough contrast here and there so mm -hmm. that it feels 3d right so if you're trying to cut through that shape you get a sense of oh that's what it would look like okay and that's enough for me as a product designer <laughs> at this phase of a project. It's like, okay, am I communicating what's happening? Cool, check, we're good to go. Right. And like I said, I'll add my little uh, my little logo I like to add on, on products. Aww, that logo. makes it, it's logo such a, a nice finishing touch. Like as soon as you did it on the backpack, I was like, wow, it's like, why don't I just put little logos on stuff? Yeah, it's just a placeholder. There's, there's little stylistic things that designers will do too. Like at the end of a line, having a couple dots, um, you may notice that on the paper, I had some texture dots here as well. It just gives a sense of what's happening. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, if you're sketching to communicate, right, you can add an arrow and text. Mm. So if this is a certain type of plastic, I'll just put some dummy text in here. Right. But if it's a certain material or has a certain function and you want to call that out, uh, just a couple arrows, two lines and... That kind of explains what's happening. So like Renee said, with Fresco, it's not that different than sketching on paper. Um, if we switch to the overhead real quick, um, you'll see how I even hold my Apple Pencil yeah. is about halfway up the barrel. Okay. Oh. So about halfway up the barrel, you'll see. Um, wow. Um, you really do. Because again, I'm up on, I'm up on that edge. I'm going to be real with you. Yeah. So we can switch back. <laughs> and, then we'll, and then we'll show you show you the technique. So I gave you two options, right? Light till you get it right. And yep. when, in, when in doubt, rough it out. Okay. When in doubt, rough it out. So I don't know if the audience had any suggestions or ideas of what, what they wanted to see, but I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do 
at least today. If you have ideas and you're going to watch the session tomorrow, definitely bring those in. Yeah. Um, I love improvising and just doing whatever you all want to see. So, well, there were a couple people talking about cars. I saw Toyota oh. Supra. People got excited about that. And then <laughs> they were also excited about your toaster. Like everybody's like, I want toast. So I don't Ooh. know if that's kind of helpful to think about those things. Maybe it's a, um, a Supra can, that's we, a toaster. We can do, we can do a vehicle. I was going to do either a vehicle or a shoe, but we can do a vehicle. Okay. So here's a, here's a technique. Let's say there is uh, in your head and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to use reference for this. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining the vehicle in my head. All right. In your mind. The cool thing about Fresco is you can work on layers, right. And these layers can have opacity. Uh, they have blending modes, but also if all I, if all I have is really just the shape of the thing right in my head, you know, I could even start with, with something like this and just kind of rough it out. Yeah. Right, just real rough here. So when in doubt, rough it out. I don't know exactly what a super looks like, but I'll do some sort of sporty, sporty vehicle. All right, so just nice and rough. Yeah. Right, I know the wheels would be something here. Just like that. Right. And in addition to that, if you sketched it and you're like, well, oh, actually it needs to be a little bit longer. Okay. Ooh. We can we can drag this out a little bit, transform, and just keep roughing things out. Okay. Just make it easy for just make it easy for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like seriously, just speaking of that, are you also moving the iPad on your table? Like you're you're rotating it, aren't you? So, I can kind of hear it. Yeah, I, I am rotating a little bit. Do you want to see that? No, no, no. It's fine. Oh, it's just okay. it's one of those okay. things that like is one of your great <laughs> tips. Cause I think people will contort their bodies instead of contort, you know, the iPad. Yeah, find the spot that works for you. And I would yeah. say, um, just stick to that. I guess maybe we'll put a spoiler on this car. I don't know Ooh, if it's a oh, yeah. <laughs> super per se, but again, we're just, we're just roughing it out. Okay. We have a general idea of what this, this might look like. Right? The the chat's very excited about this car there. So this was exactly what, what the, the people wanted. So it's a little bit of a combination of when in doubt, rough it out and also light to get right. Because now I can tap on the layer and drop the opacity. And I have a guide to help me. So if I jump yeah. to my fine liner, like I said, I'm more of a, a line artist. Okay. Let's sketch one wheel in. I like to start with the wheels personally. Mm. So something like that. Nice and warmed up ellipse. That's right. And I'll just kind of hit the outside, get this other wheel in like so. over and even as i think of think of this car i'm trying to think of it in in i guess you could say practical terms so i'll give you an example so on this layer i will draw the cross section of the vehicle as oh, I, right. as i see it okay so, so this is the this, lumpy yeah this is what's happening in my head <laughs> i'm thinking okay if i cut through the car it's yeah. going to look something like that okay if i That's were to a slice of car. It's a slice of car. If the car were bread. <laughs> All right. Something like that. That's what I'm thinking. And that allows me to then go, oh, I know where the lines are going to go. All right. This roof line will come down like so. It's yeah. going to come down on this side like so. All right. So that's a little bit of what's happening in my head, at least as I, as I perceive it, as I'm drawing something uh, like this car. Hmm. And I think, I mean, keep going right now, but I would love to know where the box is. Like, I think I know where the box is and I think there's multiple boxes, right? Like, okay. like each wheel could be a, a box, right? But like, yeah, exactly. So I'll, I'll show you if you guys missed the beginning of the presentation, presentation, definitely check it out. So there's a couple boxes here. Yes. Um, if I connect these, right, you'll notice what I'm trying to do in the drawing. So this is kind of the front of my box right here. Yeah. Right. And then we go over like so. Yeah. Right. So there's a, a main box for the body, if you will. And then there's going to be another box for the cab of the vehicle. Mm. Okay. Something like that. Um, for the wheels themselves, these ellipses are in boxes. Boxes. Yeah, absolutely. So if you can draw a box, you can draw anything. Like I said, Love I stand it. by that. So 
tomorrow we'll be doing some more interesting things as well, for sure. But hopefully this gives you at least some idea of how you can break things down and make it a little bit easier. Yeah, it totally does. I need to do this more. I need to draw out more things is what I'm saying, because I usually do not. I just do mishy mushy people or round objects and I don't draw boxes. You draw the things that I'm not good at drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Vice versa, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, you should see me try to draw a car. It's, it's a mess. Well, it takes a little, takes a little practice, but you get the hang of it. Yeah. I love these curved lines. It really like, you know, I can see how the external lines got more weight to it. Feels more strong. You know, my eyes drawn to it. I can see all of these elements you've been speaking of, like come to life here. Yeah. All of this is coming to life, you know, and there's, there's different types of lines. There's implied lines, there's gesture, there's construction lines. All of this is in this drawing. All of those lines I should say are in this drawing. So um, it's, it's definitely knowing a bit of how and when to combine things. Right. Um, that kind of gets you the final, final product. All right. So I'll take this line I'll bring it up. I'm not sure how we're doing on time, Renee, so let me know. Oh, yeah, of course. We have about uh, half an hour left. Almost. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've actually got some good time, so you can oh, okay. enjoy was, drawing this. I was scrambling. I was like, oh, no. Man, I think... <laughs> I'm so sorry to have left you a little on, in the oh, dark no there. Oh, no worries. Good to know. Yeah, right. we're till about 1125, um, so you've got just about 30 minutes to teach the okay. people how you might finish this up. And All right, I, cool. I just have to let you know the chat is going off. They love the car. And there's a lot of questions about Photoshop and brushes and how Fresco works with them. So okay. maybe if you want to yeah, talk to that a little bit, you can hit me with the questions. I'm not. Um... Yeah. So it's just, you know, what it's like, do you use Photoshop or do you use Fresco is kind of the question. So oh, I do. Nowadays, I do most of my drawing in Fresco. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do I'll use Photoshop for some specific things. And I think you know, with Photoshop on mobile, if you need to make adjustments to your drawing, that kind of thing, um, you can just bounce over to Photoshop. And what's cool is that your fresco drawing is a cloud document. So that just means that no matter what app you use, fresco, or sorry, yeah, fresco, Photoshop on desktop, or Photoshop mobile, you'll be able to have access to that document. And so wow. you can work on that. It's really handy having it like all the time, like my documents yeah, absolutely. all the time. Absolutely. Cause Fresco's on the iPhone too. So I could like open up my iPhone and like- go I have it. I have used that many, many times. Really? <laughs> yeah. Just being able to show people uh, things on the go or make little edits here and there. That's um, great. One of the cool things we're going to be showing you all as well is how you can actually collaborate in Adobe Fresco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So- We'll see if I have a, a chance to plug that in today, but if yeah. not, we'll, we'll definitely take a look at it tomorrow for sure. Absolutely. Another question is if tracing over a photo or tracing over like a car or some other object will help somebody with their other drawings, if you recommend that, or if you do that at all. Um, so one of the challenges with tracing, well, I'll give you the, the, the short answer. Yes, it can help, <laughs> but there are some things you need... <laughs> There are some things you need to watch out for, okay? So depending on how the photo was taken, you're gonna get a distortion happening from say mm -hmm. a, cam a camera lens mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily wanna replicate. So if you know what you're doing, right? And you have a photo, you can actually tweak that photo slightly and then sketch over it, mm -hmm. okay? Otherwise you're just gonna be, your, your drawings are gonna not feel feel right hmm. that makes sense it's like if you're taking a wide angle and someone's all twisty and weird exactly. at the edge that's exactly. the distortion exactly so okay. if if it's a wide angle or um, even sometimes uh, portraits that are taken can be taken with the wrong uh, type of lens and create certain distortions so you just want to be mindful of that and then um, try not to replicate that but as far as studying and understanding you know how something uh, fits together. Yeah. It can be a helpful process. Hmm, that's cool. And is there any sort of exercise to see boxes? You know, I know you drew all those boxes on top and sort of showed us where the boxes were, but what if I'm starting 
from scratch and I don't know how to imagine boxes and, okay. and turn them into boxes. How do I do that? Hmm, that's a great question. I think what I'll do is finish this up and then yeah. I'll show you just kind of the, the breakdown in my head anyways, as it is okay. um, of this vehicle. And then we can talk a little bit more about that process, particularly, I think, actually, I think uh, we, I sh I'll show you a shoe um, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff you can learn uh, by breaking down, breaking down a shoe as well. This is a sweet car and Steve in the chat says he wants to take it for a spin and I am <laughs> just right there with him. This is great. All right, I'm not gonna color this one up today, but okay. just wanted to focus on getting this reasonably represented. You can send it to me and I'll color it. Oh yeah, you gotta get that wing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> love those big wings. I, I don't even care. I love them. <laughs> All right, so maybe something like that. I think one thing I do want to tweak here is my front wheel needs to be a little bit rotated and a little bit wider. So mm. I'm making a selection with the lasso tool in Fresco. This is something you can't do on paper. So here's a little bit of an advantage. All right, so I can make that a little bit wider and right. slightly, slightly rotate, maybe pull that down. And that feels a lot better now. All right. Now, you may not be able to tell or understand why that is. So let's show you the boxes and I'll explain. Yes, okay. please. <laughs> All right, so I'll use red. So how do you know what the box looks like? Well, that initial technique I showed you where we drew the Palm Pilot, okay? And we had a top, um, front and side, side yeah. view. That's kind of, let's see, top. I think I drew this incorrectly. <laughs> Let me read this. We have a side view here, okay? And we have a top view of the vehicle that would be underneath that, and mm. then a front view, okay? Right. There's, there's boxes there. So if I have a car, for example, I'm gonna have wheels. Yep. Okay. And I'll just keep this very, very simple. Like the, the car you would <laughs> sketch in grade school, you're gonna have something like that, okay? Right little box on top of a bigger box these wheels could be in in squares essentially yeah and from the top view we have there's that line extension again oh we yeah box inside of a box right For the something roof. like that now that's essentially what is being translated here okay so this front corner of the car or this front edge yeah. is really the front edge of a box something like that okay if I connect where you saw me draw the, the bottom of these wheels, you'll get a sense for the perspective. Now I can extend this down like so. Yeah. Okay. Go like so, like so. All right, so this is the the bottom or the base box, if you will, of our two in, yep. this, in this view. So now I can extend that down, we'll go over like so. And if we draw through, Okay, and we have the backside in here, mm -hmm. like so. There is one box, oh. All right? So how do you know where to put this? Well, practice. <laughs> that's the simple. <laughs> that's the simple explanation. But really, um, if you think of your your object in terms of what are these are called standard views. What are the standard views of the object? Yeah. Okay. Um, Rob actually has a really good tip, <clears throat> draw boxes on photos. So wow. it's not so much copy the photo and the lines, but if right. you're, if you're just trying to break down perspective and one thing I've, I've done quite a bit of is even as I'm out and about, I will look at a building or look at a house and try and observe and figure out, okay, what's happening with the perspective here? The roof looks really interesting. What's going on? Where might the vanishing point be? What's the, what's the skeleton or box of this thing? How does right. that how does that look or translate? All right. So then going back to our boxes here, we have another one, right? The one on oh, top. Oh yeah. The cab. Yeah, exactly. The one on top for the cab. Just like so. And you're not quite seeing uh the backside because you're dealing with um things that are close to eye level in mm. perspective. Okay. So if I were to draw this without the car. 
the perspective would look something like this. I okay. see. And so the back side of the box is going to be hidden somewhere totally hidden, somewhere hidden. So that's why it looks like a hot mess right in that spot. <laughs> okay. But essentially there's our, our two, two boxes. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. All right. So to further explain this concept, I think what I'll do is I'll create a new document Okay. and I'll show you how to sketch something um, that we're all familiar with. <laughs> Rob says, don't do this while driving. Yes, definitely don't draw and drive. <laughs> Highly <laughs> advise against that. Mm -mm. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to do an example with a shoe. All right. Okay. So I'll use that technique again. This is just the default pencil in Fresco, but we'll start with a foot. So foot looks something like this. Again, I'm not, I'm not an anatomical expert here, but it's a I good can, foot. I like I can, it. I can, I can sketch a decent foot. All right. So we have a uh, side view and then I can project down. And the ball of your foot is going to be something like this. So just a little circle here. And then we're going to have, you know, another ball there. And yeah. I like to just connect these and you don't even have to sketch toes, but we'll just sketch a rough shape, something like this. Okay. There's yep. rough, rough foot shape. And for the front view, all right, I'm just going to sketch just the block here for toes. Cause I'm not going to do the whole thing. A little bit of a taper, right? Mm -hmm. right there and then up is also your ankle all right something like that so arch of the foot something like that okay right. so let's just use that as a foundation all right so if i want to sketch a shoe i need to pay attention to a few things uh there's going to be a plane here okay that's where your the ball or your, or your heel rather is is resting your arch is going to be slightly down and then your toes are going to kick up a little bit. Hmm. So if I were sketching a shoe, for example, I might end up with something like this. Okay. Yeah. So you see that shape coming together. Let's just do a little basketball shoe. I do. And it's amazing because, you know, if you start with the foot, then your shoe's going to look real because exactly. a foot would be inside of it. Foot would be inside of it. So if you think about the foot, right, it, yeah. it makes it a lot easier. It so does. Same thing here. I'll just extend this, extend this over. We're going to see a little bit of the underside of the shoe. Right. Because right, so. that tip is coming up. And I'm just focusing on the overall shape. I'm not getting into the details. We're just at the phase that I described, which is form. So what is the overall shape of what mm -hmm. it is you want to draw? All right. So yeah. maybe something like that. And then from the top view, all right, depending on how padded this is and the size, you may end up with something like this. Okay, you just extend that down. Shane Allen in the chat says that the things that you see in your mind are like like the mathematician from a beautiful mind. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so kind. And then they say something not kind about themselves. And so I'd like to remind you to be kind to yourself because be kind. actually, just because you're not maybe at the level you want to be at does not mean that you can't get there. All right. So if I turn this layer off, there's the foot, there's the shoe, right? Foot, shoe. Cool. So like I mentioned, we have planes at play. Mm -hmm. So we're going to treat this foot and shoe like a loaf of bread. You'll never, bread. Forget, you'll never forget that now. More bread. All right. So <laughs> these planes of movement. Okay. So I want you to, to think about these planes. Okay. We're okay. going to think about this height. We're going to think about, okay, what's the overall shape here? Right in the side view. Yeah. Okay. We're going to think about these things and now we're going to translate that into perspective. <gasps> so the first thing I'm going to do is on a new, new layer. I like to work with layers, lots of layers. One of the great yeah. things about fresco actually is there are no layer limits. There are no, no. limits to your creativity. Keep making awesome. layers, keep making them. Yeah. It's a really helpful tip for me too, because I'm yeah. always using so many layers. I mean, try and stay organized. I'm, I'm terrible at organization, but try and Same. stay a little bit organized. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to draw again, more squares in perspective, right? Boxes. So what I'm doing here mm -hmm. okay, is let me make sure I'm on the right layer. I'll make a new one and let's use a new color so that, you know, it's different. Okay. So I'm sketching a square here, basically another square here. And then I'm going to do another square box here, but mm. I'm going to do those in perspective. Right. All right. 
pro tip as well in Fresco, if you're using a bunch of colors and you forgot what color you're using, Fresco actually keeps track of all the colors you've picked. So I could just go back to that blue and it'll be the exact same blue that I need. All right. Wow. So there's my first square. I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller or I'm going to run out of space. Okay. <laughs> so if you've drawn a box in perspective and you need to find the center point of that box, it's really easy. Okay. Hmm. You just draw from corner to corner. Okay. Oh, what? Yes. It's very useful because, okay. And this is where it gets a little trippy, right? So in perspective, remember I said things closer to you look bigger than things further away. <gasps> but those are the same. But they're the same because if I draw, wow. a, if I draw a square in yeah. 2D and do the same thing, oops. They're the same length. Yeah. I should, right? Have these, yeah. these should. <gasps> be equal. So there it is in perspective. All right. So like I said, you can usually tell when something's off. You can tell when your drawing's off. And these are some ways that you can check to see, hey, what's wrong here? All right. So now I'm going to do a little bit longer box, just a little bit down here. All right. Like so. Mm -hmm. You know where that center line is. And I'll do the other one just kind of retu uh, returning up. Again, just guesstimate. Okay. Right. Just guesstimate. So I don't want to get into the specifics of all that, but if you drew it accurately, notice I drew this before the X, before the midpoint, but there's one line, two line. And right. as I notice, there's the center. Hey, it lines up perfectly with that one. So that just comes with experience. That's what I'm wow. saying. Wow. Now, right. as you're drawing these lines, I've got a question from Liana who wants to know if there's something that'll let you draw perfect straight lines in fresco. Yes. Yes, there is. So there's two ways to do that. Um, I have more success with one than the other, but there's a ruler. So if you tap on this little button in the lower right of the screen, you do get a ruler and you can position that. And now I can draw a straight line on that edge. All right. Just like that. So it's Amazing. useful if you're cleaning up a drawing for sure. And right. The other way is if you draw and hold, Fresco oh. will snap to a straight line. So if you have a shaky hand, right, and you yeah. just want to hold and snap. then like and then let go, it'll snap to a straight line. That's nice, but we're drawing light right now, so we're not worried about how crisp they are. Yeah, I'm not too worried, and okay. I, I I just like to move fast. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, because this is a basketball shoe, so it's got lots of cushioning um, in the heel, so I just want to draw that heel height. So remember I said pay attention to the height, so let's just drop down, and now I will connect my lines like so. All right, so just down like this, and then over. And I'm drawing through to make sure that I have... Uh, a good understanding of what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. So drawing through just means like I'm drawing the skeleton of the whole thing, okay? So I'll make a new layer and let's switch to red so you can see this. Okay. <clears throat> let's see how much time. Okay, we got time for this. All right. So if I'm drawing a circle in perspective, another way to understand it that mm -hmm. I taught my not taught myself, but I love this because it's it's a good reinforcement of why ellipses look the way they do. So here's a circle or here's a square that we drew. If I were to draw a circle in here, I'll do my yeah. best, my best slow circle. Okay. That circle is going to touch at these four points, mm -hmm. but then on these diagonal lines, and you'll see why this matters. They're going to intersect at about a third of the way in. Okay. Just a guess, guesstimation. About a third yeah. of the way in. So if I take that same schema, and I apply it to this heel heel portion because I'm just simplifying the process for me. Okay, close enough is good enough in this <laughs> instance. So right where my heel is in the shoe, I'm just saying, let's say that's a circular spot. So what does that look like? Okay, so I know my circle will touch at these four points, mm -hmm. assuming, assuming this is a square in perspective and mm -hmm. at about a third of the way in, right? So that lets me draw a circle Ooh. in perspective. So see how that ellipse would go through those points and touch. I do. Yeah. So if you've ever had trouble drawing a circle in perspective, if you can draw a box or a square, you're good to go. All you need is a box. That's what I've learned today. That's right. So that's a little simplification, but we'll just go ahead and now add some curved lines there. Mm. And right here on our shoe, notice that we have uh, kind of an arc like so. Yeah. And 
I would I would argue there's just likely another arc like so. So kind of these mm -hmm. complementary arcs. So what I'm gonna do now is just create some arcs like so. One, two, right? And then think about, okay, what's the shape of the toe here? The mm -hmm. toe box, if you will. What's the shape of the toe box? So depending on if it's the left or right, right shoe, um, you're gonna have more taper on one side or the other. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Right. So I'll just kind of create an arc, arc like so. All right. Add some thickness, like mm -hmm. so. Curve that line, and we have the sole of our shoe. All right. So the the other thing I said to pay attention to was this blue line that goes okay. down. That's the profile. All right. So let's do that in similar blue so you can kind of see and if i draw a plane again i don't sit and draw like this but i'm just trying to explain to you all yeah <laughs> how, yeah yeah <laughs> how, how i see the boxes and uh in my head anyways all right so let's say there's a plane here i can actually literally just think of so right here you can see that arc is mm -hmm. intersecting right at the top of the toe box intersecting with this plane and also the back here so now i can look at the shoe and go Okay, what if I draw that shape on this plane? Right. right. So you can actually pick up points, right? If you want to as well, you could draw lines and just kind of figure out, okay, what are those points and what would they look like in perspective? If I were to draw essentially profiles, what would that right. look like? And those okay. are like the slices of a car. It's slices of those shoe. Those are like the slices of a car or slices of a shoe. Okay. So I may want to extend this up a little bit, actually. So I'll cheat a little bit there and come down like so, right? Yeah. And then now in the opposite direction, okay, you could, if you want to take the time, you could draw a plane in the opposite direction, figure out the mm -hmm. shape and draw that in. But I'm just going to swing an arc here from this side, the far side that we can't see over, okay? So again, it's imagining, hey, what would it look like if you cut through a shoe, <laughs> right? What yeah. would that look like? So I'm gonna take these and just swing over, All right? Because this center line is not actually uh, the outline of the shoe, if that makes right. sense. It does make sense. All right, cool. You're with me. I am, this is amazing. Okay. I'm gonna be drawing shoes after this. <laughs> so now from this point, okay? And depending on your design, all right, I'm just going to tangentially kind of touch these lines like so, and that gives yeah. me a general shoe shape. Awesome. So we did all that work to at least get a solid foundation. Okay? Right. At least get a solid foundation um, for shoes. So now I'm going to switch back to my brushes. I'm going to go to this fine liner brush. It just gives me a nice uh, crisp line. All right, something like that. Mm -hmm. And... Instead of rotating the iPad, I'm going to rotate the canvas. So two fingers, nice. rotate, find a comfortable angle that works for me. And now this is called, or it's not that I call it, but this is called uh, re-sketching rather than tracing. So tracing would be if I were drawing slowly. Notice how as I draw slowly, even with all the experience that I have, the line's a bit wiggly. <laughs> Okay, so I try to just arc and draw a quick line right. as best as I can. It's got and so it's much just... more confidence, you know, it's yes. just those sentences, like drawings, communication, your lines are sentences. And if you're like, I don't know, it's not exactly. going to, you don't so sound I'm... very confident. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's so nice. All right. So there's the bottom of the shoe. We'll work on the design a little bit here. And I'm going to cheat a little bit on the backside, come up like so. And I'll just swing, swing a little curve here for now for the uh, throat of my shoe. Okay. So I didn't really take time. Oh, goodness. I drew on the wrong layer. Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll have to redo that. I well. think I, I think I created a layer and then I hit undo. Oh, I do that too. Yeah. I do that too. But that's okay because we didn't really think about design. So now that I have this outline, you can kind of think of it like you've identified some surfaces mm -hmm. for your shoe, right? And 
this is a very rigid drawing. So I'm actually going to take this line, for example, and kind of kink that in like so, and then bring that up. Um, but as I think about my design, right, got to think about, okay, what are the pieces, the parts here? This is called the tooling of the shoe, this portion. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, you know, if this is a basketball shoe, maybe I have some additional uh, support in certain mm -hmm. areas. Okay, that I might want to incorporate. So now I'm kind of just drawing on these imaginary surfaces, if you will. All right, maybe this could be some sort of cushioning technology. Yeah, they always have cool here. heels, the little yeah, the they cool do. against you know, squishy and, heels. And design wise, you know, maybe there's this interesting point where you have these lines that kind of cross over. So I can bring that in. Maybe Got this some. is the, the crossover shoe. Got some drama in there with those yeah. lines converging. We're all about convergence today. The convergence yes. has been it's been foretold. Yes. Um. <laughs> and then there is a question in the chat. Don't want to distract you too much, but right. there is a request for your brushes. Ooh. Yeah. So if you want those, to share. Those are available on my website, <gasps> sketchaday.com. That's awesome. That was easy. I wasn't sure if that you'd have an answer for that, but that was so easy. Of course yeah. you're prepared. Yeah, I do make and those available. That's awesome. All right, so maybe this is some sort of cushioning technology here. Mm. And you can kind of see, I'm just using the under sketch now as a guide. Okay. Yep. So we're just using it as a guide and laces are really hard. So let's see. <laughs> yeah, laces are really hard. So what I'll do is let's just do some sort of fancy parallel closure system. Cool. And who knows how it works, but it, it just works. They got all that fancy technology now. Who knows? Who knows? Now, normally I, I would do actual laces, but let's just do just a straight, straight closure here. All right. So this is, again, when in doubt, rough it out. I'm just roughing out a design yeah. and seeing, hey, do I even like this? Is this something I would want to do? Totally. Um, and I'll show you a quick way to color this up. You may think, oh, there's no way he's going to finish this. but Right? Because we got about five minutes left, but I believe... I, I've seen you do miracles, so I know you're going to have this. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, we'll we'll use the rough sketch here with a few tweaks, but um, cool. should, go I'm excited. should go pretty quickly. Oh, that looks great. I love these sort of swoops. It really just, it brings personality to the shoe, the different lines that you're choosing. Yeah. So you can play with your line thickness as well. Fresco is, or not Fresco. Um, the Apple Pencil is pressure sensitive and Fresco definitely takes advantage of that. So if you want to have a thinner line or thicker line, just push a little harder on your Apple Pencil and you'll get that thicker line. You can also customize that if you need to. It's under the app settings um, so that if it's too too jumpy for you or too soft, you can go ahead and do that. So Your pressure sensitivity, right? That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah, under the gear icon at the top, if people want to change it, Fresco's got some stuff for you. So you can- There's all sorts of it. good stuff in that gear icon. So take some mm -hmm. time, dig around. I believe it's, mm -hmm. yeah, Apple Pencil. Input. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, adjust stylus pressure. There you go. So there's yeah. your stuff. There's your curve. You can play with it. All right, so let's turn off our under sketch layer. I'm not super organized. So let's see if we can uh, group Ooh. these real quick. And Spencer's fit. grouping them by just holding the layers over each other and then they collapse automatically. You That's how you do that. Drag them in and now I can turn off all that stuff and there's our shoe. Yes. And if we need to tweak things like, oh, you know, maybe that's a little bit too uh, stubby. So you might want to pull that out. You could do stuff like that, right? That's so great. as far as color and shading goes, right? I like to keep my sketch on the top layer mm -hmm. and then we'll just we'll just shade one section of, of this just um, to be time sensitive here. Sounds good. We got about three minutes left. So let's just pick one section. I'm going to go. The other thing with Fresco is you can pick favorite brushes. So if you see a brush in your general section and you tap the little star next to the brush, it's actually going to save it to your favorites. Nice. Super handy. All right. So let's say just the toe of the shoe here. Make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay, I'm on the right layer. I like to just do a quick, I like to just do a quick outline of the area I want to shade or areas. Yeah. And then you can tap your paint bucket tool and just fill those in. What? And you may have to do a little cleanup on the perimeter, but a couple seconds. There you go. That's nice. Do that again. I love that orange too. It's a great color. Thanks. 
I like funky colors. Yeah. So I'm all about the funky. All right. So let's say we had some teal next to this. This is now on a new layer just mm. below, below that first layer. So I don't even have to worry as much about cleaning things up. We can just fill that in. Yep. All right. And let's say we have maybe a, just a nice light side panel here. Keep it classy on the side. <laughs> new layer. I'll just make that outline like so. Whoa. I can see it. You must work so quickly when you're not explaining to all of us how to do everything. <laughs> yeah, I can I see. Do, uh, I do move pretty quickly. All right. So I'll, I'll leave the laces for now, but I'm just going to switch over now. And this is similar to that pencil technique I used yep. earlier. So I'm going to switch to this airbrush that I have. Where is it? Where are you? Your highlighter. Well, Spencer's because... doing that. I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit of a wrap up and make sure that you guys know we're going to be live tomorrow at the same time, 930 PST to 1130 PST. And Spencer's going to be giving you so many other tips like this, so many awesome tips. We're going to be drawing something else. So please come back and see us, but don't go away because Adobe Live happens all day long and we've got a ton of awesome other stuff happening today. Um, and oh no, we're getting the, we're getting the ax, my dear. Sadly, it is oh, time no. for us to say goodbye, okay, but everyone. come back and you're going to see even more tips and tricks from Spencer tomorrow. So thank you so much for joining us. We so appreciate it and we'll see you then. All right.